Hey you all, it's Charlie with Merrill Performance. I wanted to start this video just making a little announcement that I have an upcoming course for you clinicians who are interested in learning about more than just pain science, especially body-oriented clinicians like physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists, gym-based trainers. If you're interested in going beyond basic pain science and learning more psychosocial, more psychologically informed strategies to be able to support your clients and your patients, with their pain and other physical symptoms. Um, this is a course for you. It starts January 30th. It'll um, be three hours every Saturday for six weeks. And then there'll be a group consult afterwards. Um, this will not be the last time we teach this course. So if you can't make it this time, January 30th, 2021, um, please check my website and my other social media feeds for the, the next upcoming course. Now that we have that out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about some random thoughts that came up for me today as I was uh, participating in my friend Joe Lavelle's podcast called The Wise Athlete. And if you're watching this now, it may already be um, uploaded and up on his website to watch, so go check it out. Um, we're talking about pain in athletes and specifically the aging athlete. And I think there's some juicy content on there that you'll, that you'll enjoy. But one of the things I realize when I'm talking about pain and when a lot of people are talking about pain is when we, when we orient to the brain, the, there's this phenomenon that you've heard me talk about that people can have pain and no soft tissue damage, no structural problems at all, which for a lot of people is really re relieving. Sometimes though, people sort of focus on the opposite, which is that sometimes we have structural problems, damage problems, and we don't have any pain at all. Sometimes it can leave people scared to think that, well, if my brain is really confused sometimes, what if I have a, a, an injury, but I don't have very much pain? Um, my brain might get it wrong in the opposite direction, right? Instead of a, a false positive, where we have pain but no problem, which happens all the time, well, the brain gives us a false negative, where it's not actually warning us that there's danger. And the two stories that a lot of people refer to to make these points. Uh, one I think is is interesting. A construction worker in the UK jumped off a scaffolding, and he was wearing his work boots, and a nail went right up through the bottom of his boot and through the top. And immediately he freaks out. He has massive amounts of pain. He collapses to the ground. Ambulance comes, takes him to the hospital. They have to sedate him. And when they get his boot off, they realize the nail went right between his toes didn't even cause a scratch, didn't go through his foot. There was no injury at all. But this guy was completely freaked out, had massive pain, right? So that's the example of um, lots of pain, no injury. The other examples are uh, uh, another example where a construction worker shot a nail through his hand. I don't know why all these stories are about construction workers, but shot a nail through his hand, and there's a great picture of it, and the guy reported no pain at all. And the story around that is that he was alone on the job site, and so he had to drive himself to the ER to get the nail taken out. So his brain uh, went into survival mode and knew that if it made him react like the construction worker with the nail through his foot, that he wasn't gonna have anyone to help him like that guy. So his brain kept the pain turned down until he got to the hospital, presumably had the nail taken out, and then I'm sure he had some discomfort later. We, we hear these stories in, the, in military context too, when someone has an arm or a leg blown off in combat, and they report no pain at all until they're airlifted out, they're back to safety, and they have surgery, and then of course later um, the brain uh, decides to turn up the pain. But in the moment there's a survival instinct. So those are the two stories that we hear. You know, the, the latter two stories are around someone that actually had an injury, a real clear injury, but had no pain. So while I find those stories interesting, the last thing I want to do is have people worry that their brain is going to make a mistake and accidentally forget to try to get their attention when something's damaged. And I want to let you know that the first scenario where you have pain but your body's okay happens all the time. Not only that, it happens to everyone. It happens to me, it happens to my kids, it happens to my wife. Our brain is uh, making that decision to produce pain in the absence of soft tissue damage uh, more often than not. It's very common. Um, the brain, however, doesn't tend to get it wrong in the opposite direction very often unless 
you're in one of these survival situations where there's another priority. You're trying to escape from someone that's chasing you. You know, people use the wild animal analogy a lot where until you get away from the animal, it doesn't matter what happens to your body. Your adrenaline, your endorphins are going to keep the, the pain amplifier turned down until you get to safety. So um, it's very rare that someone will have a significant soft tissue damage injury problem and not know about it. What we do see, and I've talked about this on this channel in the literature, is that people have um, positive findings on scan, on MRI, on x-ray, but they have no pain. And some people orient to that as well. Charlie, there's an example of someone that has tissue damage and injury, but they don't have any pain. And so this is why the way we talk about this is so important. We know that those findings on scan are just normal findings that we all have. So instead of pathologizing those and medicalizing those, like we've done in the past, I've done it, physicians do it all the time, and scaring people, we're starting to normalize those changes. Rather than calling them damage, we're just calling them normal. And this just happens as we age in our spine, in our joints, arthritis, disc, discs in our neck, discs in our back, uh, labral tears in the shoulder, labral tears in the, um, in the hip, you know, micro tearing in different tissues. If you're a runner in your Achilles or in your hamstring, these things are just happening all the time. Our body's constantly turning over, remodeling. It's so plastic that if we're asking it to do things, there's going to be stuff that shows up. So that is not an example of your brain getting it wrong and missing a chance to warn you that something bad is about to happen. Your brain's exactly doing what it's supposed to do. And it's ignoring those, those things because they're not significant because they're normal. Now you might ask, well, why is the brain giving me these false positives, getting it wrong in that direction all the time? And I would come back and say, it's actually not getting it wrong in that case either. Your brain is still perceiving danger. It's just not physical danger. It's not soft tissue injury. But there are other factors that the brain is weighing. We call these psychosocial factors, our psych psychological realities and our social realities. The brain is processing all those in our learning centers, in our emotional centers, you know, memories, past experiences, context is really important. And oftentimes it chooses pain to get our attention. It's still doing its job exactly what it's meant to do, which is to try to keep us safe. But of course, a lot of time when our body hurts, the message that we've learned, we've been conditioned to receive is, well, my body's broken or messed up or damaged. And so the process in this case is spending time to try to decipher the message to make meaning out of the pain. And the meaning is probably not something that's wrong with your body. It's probably something that's going on psychosocially, something that's going on in your life, some type of stress, some type of change. And you guys have heard me talk about this before. That's my random thought of the day. I hope that's helpful to know that regardless of what decision your brain is making, it's doing its job, it's not getting it wrong even though the message may not be super clear to you. Please take a second to check out my podcast uh, with Joe Lavelle on wiseathlete.com. I'll put a link in the description. If you're watching this before January 30th, 2021, you have not missed your chance to sign up. I'll put that link in the description as well. And please know that this course is always evolving. Um, it's an incredible opportunity for those of us who are body-oriented clinicians to stand out in our field, to take our practice to the next level, to find so much personal satisfaction in what we do, and most importantly, to change the lives of our patients and our clients in such a meaningful way. So I hope you'll join us. If not this time, you'll join us for a future course. Um, as always, I really appreciate you turning in, tuning in, subscribe, follow, share, do all the things, and I'll see you next time. Peace.